Hello everyone, I'm Love here, back again with another Awakening Chaos Era video. So in today's video, I'll be creating a video showcase on the newly released hero in the game and the hero and the hero is Sima. Basically, Sima is currently currently available in this limited summon. And is it worth it to pull her from this summoning event? And this video will go through the details of her abilities, her character design, as well as where we can use her in this game. And without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so this is Sima with a character animation where he where she shoots a fiery arrow to the target and she views some sort of like a skeleton bow that has like that uses some some sort of like a meat tendon to to be used to shoot the arrow. So she seems like a orcish uh humanoid hero with this large uh skeleton bow maybe she grabbed it from a dinosaur or something like that and she's dressed in maybe like a black leather with some skeleton as the armor and she looks like something similar to you know like dragon ball hair you know the sun goku hair or something like that before they become like the super saiyan yeah he, she gave me some sort of, a, of some sort of a vibe like that and yeah, so that's basically her 360 de uh, character design look. Kind of special, using this arrow as arrow and a uh, bow as the weapon. So let's check out her overall stats. So she has an S rating for attack, A rating for health and critical rate, and B rating across the defense and speed. So she's some sort of like a damage dealer. And let's see how her abilities sync up with her char character design. Let's start off with her unique trait which is known as, as the Body of Endurance. Upon receiving an ability that applies negative effect, reduces the negative effect trigger chance by 75% and damage received by 40%. So basically, if, you, if, you, if there's an enemy that tries to apply some sort of debuff on a uh, negative effect on her, like Nightmare from Des Des Destimona or Unresistable uh, Stun for, from Ashlyn or some sort like that, it has a 75% chance to prevent or avoid that particular debuff and also reduces the damage taken from enemy attacks. So this one is pretty unique and this is uh, some sort of like a unique ability that is uh, released in this game and is introduced in this uh, special hero with Sima. So in order to unlock her second ascension, you need to reach the fifth ascension uh, what this fifth ascension will provide is basically if the negative effect is not applied then gains 15% bonus max health kept at 3 stacks so she can gain up to 45% bonus max health something similar to how you have like hair cream boosting up every everyone's health so this one is really powerful to make her even more tanky all right so that's basically her trait and this one might uh, help in Maybe like the Reef of Chaos, the water boss, because she's the wood affinity there, a stronger affinity, so she has a chance to avoid getting freeze from the boss uh, uh, UE attacks. And next one would be the Devastating Strike, which is her basic ability that deals 120% damage to one enemy and applies crit critical rate down to them for two turns. I wonder why the developers put this critical rate down for her, because is not really used in the Lava Colossus, which applies critical rate up on himself. Ideally, I think this one should be changed, maybe boost up her attack stats or some sort like that, in order to improve her damage output. Like, I find it kind of strange why the developers put this debuff here. And then for her special ability known as the Pure Vengeance, when an ally receives negative effects, Simon launches a counter attack with the special ability to deal 120% damage and randomly transfers one negative effect on one team member to the attacker up to one time per round. Damage skills with Sima Specs Health. So this one only works one time per round and if you want to increase the chance, you need to use Mastery Book to improve the chance from one time to two time. So this one uh, helps a bit for the Rift of Chaos, the Water, the Arctic Goliath, but you cannot really depend on this one because it doesn't really it only removes one time per per ability effect so you cannot really use this one this one 
needs to be triggered when receiving negative effect. So if the boss applies AOE negative effect, it only removes one of the hero or one of the ally negative effect, not all of them. So this is not really useful for the Rift of Chaos, the water boss. Unless you can pair her with another attacker that provides some sort of like similar ability to remove all of those frozen debuff quickly before they forfeit their turn. Alright, so that's basically... And it says that the, the special thing is this that damage scales with Sima's max health. So the more health she has, the more damage she can deal. I think this one synergizes very well with her trait, but you need to have her to be uh, ascended to the 5th ascension in order to benefit from the max health. I have tested her, her damage output by providing her more health, but the uh, by, by sacrificing attack and providing more health, right? It reduces the damage uh, quite a bit. So I think this special ability, right? This damage skills need to work with this trait, the second ascension here. And then finally, her ultimate ability known as the Harbinger of Doom that has a 4 turn skill cooldown, deals 150% damage to one enemy, and randomly transfers two negative effects on each team member to the enemy. Damage skills with this hero's max health and ignores 8% of the enemy's defense per negative effect transferred. This ability cannot be deflected. So, yeah, so this one, the more negative effect that your hero has, right, then the more ignore defense that he, she can do. So, the, let's say, assuming the, ball, the boss, let's say, in the Arctic Goliath, applies 5 bombs, so that means 5 negative effect. I think only transfer 2 negative effects only. On each team member. Oh, I think I think I think it's supposed to can yeah. I think this one removes all of the bombs applied by the Arctic Goliath in the Rift of Chaos. This one will work. And I think this one also will work for like the Wish of the Wind to remove all of those bleeding or no positive effect. This one will will, will work also there. And the more negative effect are transferred, the more defense ignored. So I guess let's say if two times Let's say if you if you have around about four heroes, including Sima herself, four times two is eight. Eight times eight is sixty four percent. So sixty four percent ignore defense, which is some sort of the same level of Grayson, with a fully mastery book. All right. So basically, from her abilities, right, what we can see that she's some sort of like a damage dealer, as well as a supporter hero to cleanse the cleanse away the negative effect. Uh, using her ultimate ability, the Harbinger of Doom, as well as her special ability, Pure Vengeance. And it also applies this critical rate down, which is not really useful, based from my testing in the dungeons. Alright, so let's check out the Ace Developers Guide. So they recommend Dragon Skill Set for Arena, and Assassin Set for PvE content. So there are some players who have already rated her 5, for offense and defense, maybe this one is used to counteract the debuff placed by the enemy. Maybe like Garnet applied, but I don't think I don't think she be. I, I think I think it works for her controllers like Garnet because it has a seventy five percent chance to avoid getting sleep, as well as uh once the enemy applies the crowd control right, then she can reflect. That negative effect but it's only on one ally so maybe she's like some sort decent for arena defense but uh, i don't really see it that way hmm because it only uh, removes only one not all of the ally unless you build her fast then to transfer all those negative effect to them back but i really don't see her useful especially for arena mostly she's mainly used for the pve content all right so let's check out the gear so oh yeah before that uh, let's see her overall stat. So basically, I prioritize on the as like a damage a nuker. She needs to have some attack, critical rate, critical damage, and speed, and some focus to to transfer the negative effect as well as placing the critical rate down. So if you want to do that, then you need some focus stats here. So this one is like uh, some sort of like an average build, especially for like early to mid game players. I think mid to close to late game players stats. And here are her gears. Currently, I'm gearing her in a mix set, uh, one assassin set to, to allow her to deal 15% more damage 
because she's mainly dealing single target damage rather than AoE, so Avarice is not really useful here. So this is the gear. I provide the attack, focus, critical rate, and precision. Precision is ideal for arena. Then we have the helmet with some critical rate, attack, health, and defense. So the more health she has, the more damage she can do. And this is the armor with critical damage, health, attack, and agility. Ideally, this agility should be critical rate or critical rate. Then we have speed boots. To this one, I was testing her in the Reef of Chaos because you really need a lot of speed. And this is a critical rate ring. Then this is the attack necklace. Then I got her uh, Astro Crest that provides some critical damage. It's not that much. The glyphs and abilities are all maxed out. And for her ascension, she needs a lot of copy in order to, to benefit from this 15% bonus max health so that she'll be able to do more damage. And then for her masteries, her ability mastery will provide her with a 23% additional critical rate. Then for her physique mastery effect, this one provides additional critical damage. And then as usual, attack boost and defense boost and health boost based on her speed. And finally, her gears basically are the same thing. That provides 45% increase in main stat for weapon hit chest and 30% for the feet, neck, and hands. Alright, so let's check her out in the dungeon to see how she performs and to see what damage she can do in an, as in an assassin set with this 4000 attack and close to 200 critical damage. Alright, so the first area that I'll be showcasing Sima will be the Queen of Tides because she's because Sima has the ability to transfer the negative effect, especially the water prison. So let's see how she can help her team to survive that. So let me optimize the team first. Okay, let's find. All right. So this is the team. I have uh, Rachel to tackle the positive effect on the boss to prevent her from applying the water bomb. And then I have Hitoshi here to take care of the first two wave. And then Shane for the added support for the additional attack and uh, karma down. And finally, our main star of the show, Sima, to see how she can help her fellow allies in speeding up this run. And for the spells, I'll be using Sarai Purgatory for the defense down and Geist Renewal for supplementary healing. So at the start of the battle, Shane will go first to boost up his ally and apply the karma down, followed by Rachel to boost up everyone's attack stats and then Hitoshi to clear out the wave. Then the second wave will be the same, Hitoshi will clear them out after her allies, his allies do, do some damage here. Alright, at the boss stage, the target priority is to target the right tight guard to prevent the healing and then target the boss. So we are now taking down the right tight guard. So the tight guard has already we have reduced his health to 50%. The left tight guard applies the joint attack. And with the joint attack, we will be able to trigger Rachel's additional attack here to remove those positive effects. Right now, the boss will apply the water prison to stun the uh, hero. Luckily, we have the Sima here. She will counter attack with a special ability whenever her allies receive a negative effect, such as like stun, uh, the stun that's applied by the water prison from the boss. This allows Mahitoshi to have to be free and then will be able to support his allies with more damage to the boss here to speed up the run. So this is one way you can use Sima to remove those neg those pesky negative effects to speed up the run. As you notice, right, she doesn't really do much damage even with an assassin set and a 4000 attack. Right, so that's basically how she performs. Nothing amazing compared to other legendary heroes like Shane or Rachel. There's some sort of like a cleanser role in this particular team. And yeah, so she doesn't really provide much damage output. So let's check out the battle report. So she deals quite little damage. So if I were to compare her with another epic hero like Karina, Karina dealt slightly more damage compared to her if in a, an, even in an assassin set. And yeah, so this is the uh, damage dealt. For the damage taken, is roughly the same. Um, some way Sima received more damage here, although she has the, the trait to reduce the damage. 
and these are the healing dealt. Miss Lee Shin is in a revival set to heal himself up there. Alright, so that's basically Sima showcase in the Queen of Tides. So let me show you how she can uh, help you in the Shadow Captive, where Shadow Captive applies plague negative effects. Alright, so we are now in the Shadow Captive stage 11. And this boss is famous for his plague, where the plague will deal massive amount of damage based on the hero's max health by like 20% per plague. And let's enter this stage. So this is a team that I'll be using to showcase Sima. So I have Alastair, he's a light hero to do more damage to this dark boss. Then I have Imogen to just benefit from the critical damage uh, leader ability. Then I have Sarah for more damage output. Then Sima is here to remove the, the plague uh, negative effect. For the spells, I'll be using Smurring Flames to wipe out the enemies on the first wave. And guys, renewal for additional healing. We will not be using Southern Purgatory because the boss is immune to all negative effects. Alright, so at the start of battle, we dealt some damage here with Sima. Then next here, the boss on Shadow Captain is really fast, above like 200 speed. So our heroes all receive negative effect. And then we got it cleansed with Sima's uh, AoE ultimate ability, uh, sorry, ultimate ability that can remove all of the negative effect. Then we have Alastair to wipe out the boss HP. And then, yeah, so that's basically the showcase pretty fast. So if you guys have are having some difficulty surviving those plague negative effect, right? What you need to do is speed tune Sima to go first so that she's able to cleanse away those plague negative effect before our other heroes take their turn and receive damage from those plague negative effect. So this is a battle report. Alastair is the main MVP damage dealer here with 84,000 damage followed by Sarah as well as Sima and Imogen. These are the damage taken. Alastair is taking the most damage here because he's a light hero. And then these are the healing dealt. So basically uh, Sima applied the Gaius Renewal. So that's why she can perform a lot of healing to our allies here. Uh, yeah, so that's the showcase for Sima in the Shadow Captive. Alright, so we're now in the Roaring Topa Helmo Stage 4. And let's check out Sima in this team formation. So I have Sima. So as, as usual, right, these enemies here can apply defense down. So Sima is quite useful here to reflect that defense down to the enemy back. Then we have the Florence as the leader. Basically, she's there for her healing as well as AoE bonus attack. Then two, my two favorite damage dealers here, who is Rosalie as well as Bela, who can deal massive amount of damage to these good enemy heroes. And for the spells, I'll be using Sarin Purgatory to apply the defense down and guys renewable for supplementary healing. Alright, so let's see this team in action. Alright, so at the start of the battle, we have Florence to apply the defense down as well as AoE bonus attack and increase damage taken, which makes it an easier work for my Rosalie as well as Bella to take down these enemies here. Then we have uh, Sima to do some damage, but the damage is uh, incomparable <laughs> to these 5 heroes here because 5 heroes will deal 50% more damage. But when, uh, since we know that Sima does not really do much damage, in the water, uh, water against water enemies like the Queen of Tides as well as the Roaring Tupa. Let's see how we can make use of her special ability to transfer those negative effects through her special ability as well as the ultimate ability here. Alright, so for the target priority, we'll just take down the boss and the adds we can let Clarence trade to take care of it. So once uh, my Damage dealers deal two basic abilities, then they will be able to do some splash damage there. So that's the counter attack damage dealt by by Sima there. Whenever my hero receives a negative effect, with the with the presence of Sima, right, we can continuous, con continuously have those defense down on the. Uh, on the boss here, which makes it a faster run to take down these enemies. So that's a counter attack and another counter attack from Sima. Right, so the boss has already 50% health on the last HP bar. So it's like pretty fast run. So once you have the, this hero's book, right, you can speed run this dungeon very fast. 
Alright, so there isn't much going on with Sima because she doesn't really do much damage. All she's there is for, to remove the negative effect from our heroes so that they will not receive more damage from the enemy attacks. So let's check out the battle report. As you notice, Sima doesn't really do much damage here because these two fire heroes, Rosalie and Bella, they are wiping out the enemies before Sima gets, gets a turn for the first and second wave. And these are the damage taken. As usual, fire heroes will re receive lesser damage. And then these are the healing dealt. Most of the healing comes from Flaren's skill, from her ultimate as well as her special ability. And Bela, Bela has the ability to heal. And, and Rosalie, I think she has ability to heal herself up. I think slightly a bit. Alright, so that's basically the showcase for Sima in the Roaring Tulpa. Alright, so we are now in the Reef of Chaos, the Water Boss, the Arctic Goliath. So let's see how Sima can help us in this particular battle. So let me try stage 1 to see how she works. So currently I'm using my poison team which consists of the Gangelo and Santis. And then I have Hakrin for the increased max health as well as the additional defense from his trait, Jonathan for the AoE shield and then Blackhorn for his AoE cleansing and healing. So I think the hero that can swap out would be Santis. Let's see how Sima can help us in dealing more damage to these enemies here. So let's try Sima here. Maybe I just try on stage 3. See how, how she fares there. Okay, let's find Sima again. So I'll put this on auto to see how, how she works in terms of cleansing. Alright, so at the start of the battle, the Reef of Chaos will do... Oh, we start the battle without getting hit by the AoE <laughs> attack. Alright, so we do some poison with Gangelo's attack. Oh yeah, I've already disabled... Jonathan's ability, this is really important, so that uh, Jonathan will not gain the bonus turn during the boss turn where he places the counter attack buff on himself. So if if Jonathan tries to attack during uh, after the boss turn, right, when he has the counter attack uh, buff, then it will be quite detrimental because, because he can one shot none wood heroes here. Okay, so Sima tries to... Okay, so Sima applies the critical rate down and also uh, transfer one of the negative effect. But as you notice, the bomb isn't able to be transferred to the boss to do damage to him. So that is not really useful here. And most of the cleansing is done by Blackhorn, Blackhorn's summon totem there at the end of the boss turn. So, so Blackhorn summon another totem again for the cleansing. And seems like she also performed counter attack there to remove one of the negative effect, the frozen negative effect placed by the boss. Okay, that is another bomb here. So she managed to only remove one bomb only. Our heroes receive another frozen debuff. And yeah, if you are able to get her ascended to the uh not, not ascended, get the mastery books on her skills, then she'll be able to remove neg the negative effect twice. Especially for the frozen debuff. But I feel it's not really necessary to invest book her because she doesn't really do much damage. And she can only remove like at most two two negative effect with her special ability here. Seems like the run is pretty long, so by by round eleven, right, we should be managed to reduce the boss health to three three bars with poison debuff. So Sima doesn't really help much in terms of damage, even with a uh, assassin set. So I guess she's not really useful in this particular dungeon, unless the Ace developers do some changes, maybe. Uh, instead of applying the critical rate down, she can might as well place poison debuff on the enemy, which makes more sense, especially for the water boss here. So she can you know help out with the poison application to do damage to the boss, even though her main damage output is, isn't really there. 
And another thing that I would change or revamp the Sima would be her special ability shouldn't have any like specific condition. It should trigger as many times as possible whenever the enemy applies the negative effect. So let's say the boss applies UE negative effect, she trigger one time. Then if the boss applies UE negative effect again, then she'll be able to trigger again. So this will make more sense for the Rift of Chaos. So as at her current condition, she's not really useful in, in this situation here. Because she doesn't really perform a great cleansing, a great cleansing role like Blackhorn. And neither she does much damage to the enemies here. So we are now approaching round 21. And we only managed to take down 3 health bar from the boss. So yeah. So I guess if you are still if you're thinking of trying to pull Sima during this limited summon, I highly advise you to just keep your your stardust for a more better hero than Sima here. Because I think it's not really worth pulling her for the Rift of Chaos. There are much more better heroes than Sima. You can use like Rachel in this spot to apply the continuous heal. As well as the attack above, or you can use like the Hyunwoo with the ninja guy that can apply lots of, I think, bleeding or in like, I think it's bleeding, right? Bleeding neg negative effect on the enemy to do even much more damage here. So far, yeah, she's, she seems not special in this scenario here, unless the Ace developers perform uh, quite an extensive uh, changes to her, her role. Or, or I, I got another idea. If if she's able to transfer that bomb right to the boss, and the bomb deals massive amount of damage to the boss, then it'll be, then then she will have some, a uh, good mechanic there, which is re which is reusing the enemy's negative effect to do damage to the boss himself. So rather than like using poison, he uses the bomb from the enemy to do massive amount of damage. So this one will will make more sense here. Alright, so the battle has just ended. It took a very, very long time. 9 minutes, which is twice as long compared to my poison team. So this is the battle report. We completed the battle in 33 rounds. Most of the damage is dealt by Gangelo at, at close to 800,000, uh, 780,000 damage. Followed by Sima at 282,000 damage. And the rest would be like Jonathan, Hair Queen, as well as Blackhorn. So these are the damage taken. Sima does not really take much damage because of the trait, as well as she's a wood hero. And then these are the healing dealt. Basically, Blackhorn is performing a lot of healing. And then we have Jonathan in a revival set. He, he also heals a lot. And also, same goes with uh, Ganchilo. Alright, so that's basically Sima's performance in the Rift of Chaos. So hopefully this gives you an idea whether is it worth to pull her during this limited summon. Alright, so that's the end of my video showcase of Sima in the, uh, in the PvE dungeons such as like the Queen of Tides, Roaring Topa, Shadow Captive as well as the Reef of Chaos, the Arctic Goliath. Do let me know down in the comments below what do you think about her. And if you found this video helpful, do give this video a thumbs up as well as uh, click on the subscribe button if you are new to my channel and ring the notif notification bell to stay up to date whenever i upload a new video on the channel thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye